we kick off, uh, Michal, and I'll introduce myself first, and then then we'll give you a little bit of an opportunity to introduce yourself. And and the main focus of today is is really for. Um, I suppose for this group and everybody that's attending or anybody who's listening to this recording afterwards um, is actually to just get a feel for what the presidency is um, and uh, what the accounting and technicians Ireland is actually doing at the moment and a general update and I suppose a little bit of information on your presidency and, and things that have happened so far. Uh, I'll introduce myself but just first just to say that this is being recorded. Hello from Mac County Offaly. We're getting the Midlands. Um, this is being recorded, so be be conscious of that. Uh, it would be lovely if we had some questions as we go along, pop them into the chat box. But it'd be also equally lovely um, that we, we, we won't name too many people, but just to be aware um, that it is being recorded and that it will be shared um, with all of the members in due course. So I'll introduce myself. I'm Evelyn Johnston, and I actually had the privilege last year of doing uh, this virtual meet the president and meet the vice president last year. We think it was probably around September from my memory, and it was a real privilege. And it's great actually to meet Michal uh, this year and actually to do the same thing. The whole idea of today is just to get a feel for what's going on in ATI. My background is financial services. Um, I spent a bit of time in EY as well at one stage in my career and in Grand Thornton. And I am currently um, aff affiliated with Adaptus Training. I do a lot of training and coaching. So I meet people from all aspects of life and every single industry possible. So it's just an absolute privilege um, to spend some time with like-minded people. So that's my introduction. Um, it would be lovely just to hear from you, Michal. It'd be really nice to hear um, who you are, some of your background, a little bit of a feel for what you're seeing in the membership and we'll just have a chat and and we'll see where this goes yeah uh, thanks Evan I think um yeah thanks very much for, for agreeing to do this again the last couple of years from both of you and someone participating it's been really um, beneficial I think mm -hmm. feedback from members in particular has been quite useful and the fact that we can do it online I think we had 125 or so registered you know it just opens up the possibilities <laughs> so many county counties represented um I suppose we'll touch along the kind of what 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 the ATI's Doing now and what they're doing in the in the near future and kind of slightly more longer term as we go through. Um, I suppose I've been involved with ATI I think since 2014. Mm -hmm. um, I was a former student, so um, Belfast Met is where I done my studies, mm -hmm. worked uh, full time, and then studied two evenings a week. Um, and I got involved in the district society as their student member, and so kind of I continued the studies, the working, and then the involvement in the institute right through. Um, joined the, the board there in the last few years and then obviously vice president last year and president. So I have a long history um, kind of with ATI. I have gone on and done my charter, but, you know, I very much acknowledge the benefits that ATI has in my career. Um, and really what I'd like to get across today and through my presidency is the benefits and my journey and, and how it's benefited me. And, and hopefully people can see parallels or be inspired or take something away from it. That's ultimately what I'd like to do. Uh, personally, you know, um, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy the finance aspect. Um, my role is quite diverse. You know, finance is a big chunk of it, but also HR, governance, and corporate services, kind of mentoring a team, all of that, um, and those skills and kind of my experience has, has stemmed in many ways from my ATI um, qualification. I was saying earlier on, I remember vividly the business management um, module. You yeah. know, I didn't expect it was very non financy and that there was IT, there was HR. And certainly, you know, for accountant technicians and then being you know part of a business, some of them in small businesses, it's important that, it, that the accountant technician can take up loads. So I've, I've seen that firsthand, the benefit mm -hmm. it has for me. Um, I'll say I'm very passionate about the Institute and passionate about what it can do for people. And um, it's exciting, the developments that are coming up. So certainly we'll, we'll, we'll go through those as we as we go along this afternoon. That's uh, that's brilliant. And thank you. But I actually, I was just thinking as you were talking to me there. So 2014 is when you actually uh, became involved with ATI and you're the 28th president. So do you remember what, what president we were at at the time? It was probably in the early 20s. Do you remember? Who I was? do remember because it's, it was a mentor of mine and somebody that you know got me started on the ATI journey. It was Louise Gorman. She was oh. the last um, Northern Ireland president. I think it was around that time. I remember attending her president's dinner and being totally inspired and seeing everything that she'd 
she brought yeah. to the table and the fact that she was she was able to mentor me and I, I still value you know that opportunity to work with Louise and develop through Louise and, and be involved um um so yes I remember at that time the president was I think Louise Gorman that's amazing actually and you brought up a topic that I'm just going to note down that I might actually come back to you on because mentoring is something that's very close to my heart and actually community and actually the the whole community aspect of ATI um it, it it can include mentoring as well as any every other thing and i mean what you're going to do is today is share some of the really valuable parts of it yeah i mean the important aspect is your work log and you need to have somebody there to support and mentor you um, and somebody who understands and is able to give you the opportunities to learn and develop um mm -hmm. it's very difficult to get through life if you don't have some sort of support professional you know mentorship and support and I've been lucky in that I have benefit from a, in a number of jobs from from people passing on their knowledge and experience, and it's certainly something certain something I I um, I, I love to do to, to my team. So it's great that actually one of my team is now starting his ATI journey, just oh, wow. um, starting his profession his, his studying this year, similar format to me doing evenings working full time, and then mm -hmm. another one of my colleagues is doing her SEMA, so she's oh, wow. starting the SEMA journey. So um, definitely actively encourage them and really want them to complete and achieve what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be there to support them as much as I can and, and certainly the Lyric as well as a business is very aware of the need um, to foster and or, uh, support its employees and, and I definitely take that quite seriously. You've actually, it's the perfect segue, it's like as if we practiced this and we did, <laughs> um, is the whole Lyric side and, and for me having a, a background in financial services, creativity was never really tied side by side with um with accountancy if for, for and that's not to insult any of the members but it doesn't naturally always fit so i'd love to see how you ended up uh, in this side of your career with a creative aspect of your role because i know you're very involved with lyric yeah no my journey to where i am now is probably quite a windy one it took a couple of oh, days okay, here, here and there. so i'll try and give the abbreviated version i think if yeah. i just start maybe at my a level so um i was working full-time in a, in a cat or part-time um in a local hotel and i think i carried away with that aspect so i was doing friday night saturday night and sometimes sunday afternoon and um, as well as trying to do my a level so i didn't quite get what i anticipated or had hoped for and my first choice was an accountancy um kind of qualification didn't quite get that, but did get enough to get into economics at Queen's. Um, it was a really diverse course. I met some really good people. Um, it kind of, I still at that stage didn't know quite what I wanted to do. Um, and for, as a result of that, I got a job in the civil service. It was a really steady job. Um, it was something that offered the potential for great opportunity, but I just, in myself, I couldn't see myself being there for 40 and 50 years. You know, I wanted to really challenge myself. So I took a few years knew that I wanted to do like a, a master's um, or some sort of additional qualification, saved up some money and then identified kind of a man management and corporate governance uh, master's course at the University of Ulster. Um, it had great feedback at the time. Um, it was very much one of those courses that give you a key and a lot of experience in different areas uh, and give you an additional qualification with the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators. And there was also great employment opportunities from it because um, it was one of those courses that was very sought after, particularly um, from ROI kind of companies where company secretarial was a kind of important job and, and, and was pivotal and there was a lot of demand for it. So I was recruited straight out of that to AL Good Buddy. And it's where I kind of seen myself in that corporate world. I always just thought, God, I'd, I'd love to be in a big firm or a big organization. And I yeah. did, did get that through AL Good Buddy. And they supported me as I worked my three years and got you know my chartered secretary qualification. Um, and then I, I think I reached an impasse. While I enjoyed the job and the company, it just wasn't doing everything that I wanted it to do. I think doing minutes was never my forte. Yeah. <laughs> so I certainly was drawn to the more kind of straightforward aspects of it, which was the financial statements, the registers, the governance piece. Um, unfortunately, that kind of job wasn't popular or, or there wasn't much opportunity in, in Belfast. So um, I came back and kind of started from scratch. I took a job as kind of an admin with some finance aspects in the Northern Ireland Museum Council, which was a not-for-profit kind of arm's length body in the public sector. So I felt like I'd, I'd gone 360 being back in the public sector and that, but I really enjoyed it because you're at the core, it was a small organization, four or five people. The job was very diverse. Um, I did meet Louise and I had a really good um, uh, line manager as well in there, Chris. So um, they really inspired me to take that next step, which was to follow you know, what I really wanted to do. And that was accountancy and finance and all of that. So um, through Louise, I, I applied for a job at the Lyric and started at the bottom, you know, a uh, finance assistant, you know, after after working through three years of a qualification to become a chartered secretary, achieving um, a master's and having my degree 
you know, I just felt this was the best way because I always heard from people and um, if you can get a good experience around double entry and all of the, the basics, understand the purchase ledger, the sales ledger, get to do management accounts. If you know all of those, you can go anywhere. You know, when yeah. you, you want to go on to be an accountant, which I, I wasn't sure at that stage, I was very much focused on getting my ATI qualification fully absorbed in that. So um, long story short, uh, yeah, I, 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 I really threw myself into the accountant technician qualification and, 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 and really enjoyed it, all aspects of it. And certainly being involved in the committee and meeting like-minded professionals, I think in the art sector or not-for-profit, you don't engage with those as you would in a big firm. So those relationships and connections are really, really important. Um, and then, as I said, I was quite content with my qualification, but I really want to just personally achieve my chartered um, exam. So that's what I've spent the last couple of years doing. Got my exams last year and hopefully go on to full membership um, in the next few months. So, yeah, I told you that it's a long story. Hopefully that's to bring you in. <laughs> You're the eternal student. <laughs> <laughs> no longer. I've promised everybody I know that I won't be doing any more exams. Oh, well, yeah. I'm, well, it, it actually it's it's so interesting because one of the things that you mentioned there, uh, which just resonated with me, was I had got to this level, but then I realized no, I needed to go back down again a couple of steps. Even though you you'd had your degree and you'd had your qualifications, um, you knew what you wanted, and and that is so important for people to hear. You know, to actually take that time to know what you want because you can see that you can you enjoy what you do you can actually see it um in what you're describing um so so that's great um thank you very much for that um so yeah you've just done the, the chartered accountancy ireland exam so well done on that <laughs> and this is the last you say so hopefully. that's it yeah yeah that's it well you've, you've a long cv um a fairly respectable cv um We'd all agree. So I'd love you just to talk about ATI. So some of the people that are members here, they may be members for a while, some maybe students, and um, some have got involved. I've been hearing great things about some of the initiatives that have been happening this year. But it would be really, really lovely just to reflect somewhat on the value of membership um, and what's so important um, for our members. Like, wh why would you be a member? And why is it so important that they stay connected? Well, I think it, the qualification in itself is so well recognized. And as I said, all the benefits it's shown me in terms of progression, wealth of experience and um, being able to uh, learn and work at the same time, which I think is a key aspect of that. You know, I, I was learning and working and I definitely seen the synergy between, you know, learning something in class and then going into work the next day and doing it. So in terms of, of, of kind of the, the technician's qualification, I think in itself, it's, it's a really big draw. And certainly some of the learnings I've learned over, or, or taken on board over the last few months to say, well, respected it is, you know, how employers respect it, they understand and the quality of, of, of the people that the accountant technicians that are coming through. And um, then you reach a stage then, you know, when you achieve your qualification, like what is about keeping that membership? And as I say, I can see that through the events that we offer. The CPD program is second to none, you know, from what I can see in terms of what we offer. Um, we're getting back up and we'll touch on it later, just back up into that networking kind of meeting peer and peer learning aspect of it, which has also been really important. When I was on the committee pre-COVID, you know, we we did offer a, a, a eclectic mix of uh, events, some of which have since moved online. But, you know, there was an investment there, willingness to offer what's good for members in terms of professional development and personal development. Yeah. Um, and I can see that myself. As I said, working in the art sector or certain sectors, you know, you're kind of cut off from like-minded individuals and that you may just be a small cog and, and quite a, a wider, a wider, um, not sure what the, what the small cog in a kind of a big organization. So yeah. you may not get to see like-minded um, members or accounting technicians on a regular basis. So certainly those events offer an opportunity to do that. Um, actually, it's an all-Ireland body. You know, you, you see today that we've got representatives from all over the countries, which is really positive. Um, and as I say, my own experience and journey, I think, shows the value of the value of the membership and all the exciting things we have coming up. You know, we don't sit in our laurels. Certainly there's an always, mm. uh, always on to improve and see what the members want, what the businesses want. How do we offer that out? And, and certainly some of the initiatives we have in the next 12 months are, are, are evidence of that. So um, the Institute itself feels like it's constantly evolving, taking yeah. you know, feedback, learnings from particularly through COVID, you know, learning you know, what worked for us through COVID, what do we need to do to get back? What do our members need? Um, member input is vital. I think if there's any takeaway from today, it's just to be involved. 
you know, mm -hmm. because we are a member led institute. So we do kind of need that input from members at all levels, whether it's mm -hmm. getting involved in the district society. If you can't do that commitment, going to the CPDs, you know, just to be involved um, in your institute. And I think what you give in, what you put in is sometimes, you know, you, you, the benefits is, is huge. Yeah, well, clearly, you, I mean, you, you, you're, you're, you walk the talk, actually, Michal, and I think that's really important. I was just going to say, if anybody wants to put in questions, please feel free to put in questions um, into the chat box and, and we'll, we can respond to them. And, and if you're uncomfortable with me naming somebody, that's fine. We won't we won't say names. Um, I, I, I love what you're talking about there about getting involved and there may be some people who are actually sitting here who are going, I'd love to get involved. And how would I get involved? Because it sounds as if Mihal is actually benefiting from the involvement. What would you suggest people do, Mihal? Well, I appreciate it. I mean, it's 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 trying to how much time you can commit because we're all really busy. And I think one of the things I was going to talk about is kind of what drives me forward is learning, but I'm quite conscious that everybody is different. So it's kind of what can you put in or, or what time can you commit? Because you know, we're all particularly busy, we're all trying to achieve a better work-life balance that's learning for me since COVID is you know it's all right taking on all of these things but it's been able to manage it in the context of family kind of um the support network you have your employer other commitments so um I mean if you want to go all in we certainly would be welcoming of district society members we have four district societies um, and they have a committee you can kind of coordinate and um, going forward we'll, again we'll touch on it later just about the re-engagement plan for the next 12 months mm -hmm. and so it is about um developing that and putting, uh, practically getting it set up and then rolling it out and then actually implementing it. So it's very hands-on, but again, great to meet committee mm -hmm. members. You know, you do get to attend a lot of these events for free if you're a committee member. Um, yeah. You get to engage with people, you see people coming, you can catch up with friends you haven't seen, make new acquaintances. So it really is about the networking aspect. And um, we have the CPD, which is the lunchtime webinar. So if you can, can join in on those, um, they're offered, I think, every few weeks, full comprehensive range of, of, of webinars offered across the year. And recording some of them, so it's building up that catalog. And again, you can you can access those, and we've got the bytes, um, and then we've all of the the networking events, which we would encourage people to attend. And then there's the surveys that go out, you know, about important developments in in the institute and the sector. And again, if you complete one of those surveys, I think the most recent one was our uh, member survey, which covered a lot of things that we'll again touch on later. So if you if you completed that, you know, that in itself is engagement um, mm -hmm. and is really important in the future direction of the institute. And we, we pull out a couple of the free key kind of key kind of takeaways from those surveys as well. Give members an insight as to generally what the feeling is and, and where, where how that's impacting what we do. It's really important. Um, and it's really important actually for members to hear that, even if it's if 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 you're listening in now or even listening to the recording, it's really important actually that involvement. And quite often we think, oh, I must do that and I must put that in. And, and you said the word busy. We're all very busy. But actually, it never feels busy when you're doing something you're enjoying. It never actually does. So I, I do think that that's a really important reflection for, for everybody. It's just that we can all make time for things that are important to us. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, yes, yeah, so you're halfway through this presidency and uh, it sounds as if it's been quite busy um, so far, and I, I would actually love to hear um, about some of the networking events, because I know that there was one quite recently that was close to home. Yeah, so the last, I suppose, since coming on board, I was thinking, what, what could we do to kind of acknowledge that it's an NI presidency this year and the fact there hasn't been one in a number of years, it may not be for a few more. So it just felt like a really good opportunity to get out there and kind of meet the employers, meet the students, meet the um the educational partners and really just to, for my own benefit is to kind of hear directly from them what's good what's bad what's what they're thinking what their thoughts are and then and then feed that into kind of my priorities over the next year so very fancy title of the ni business roadshow not to be confirmed with the radio one roadshow and so we spread that over a few weeks in october so as i say my own roots and network here in northern ireland i thought it was a really good opportunity to kind of outreach to employers colleges and students and kind of establish and forge new relationship so the objective really was to raise awareness of ATI as a you know as a as a provider of, of, of talent um, in my own role I can see the challenges that businesses are facing kind of with the talent pipeline and uh, we have such high caliber of members and graduates and we really wanted to put that to the fore whether it's um, you know those starting out students or members who are looking to develop their career or affiliates or, or looking to get the experience we we tried to put all our members at the fore whenever we were meeting with with, with employers um, so in terms of the, the, the roadshow itself, it started off in Uri, which is again somewhere I spent most of my teenage years. I went to the Abbey and 
moved to a different place, but um, the first place was FPM and it was just down the road from my old school. And we took a wee walk, Gillian and I, um, through Newry, and we got to see where the old Woolworths used to be, and it brought back a lot of good memories. So, uh, and then we ended up in SRC, which I used to drive past every day on the way to school. So it really felt like a good starting point for the roadshow in yeah. SRC. It was really good to see how they're they're they're, they're how they're running and kind of how they thought of the ATI and the apprenticeship is, um, and then hear from FPM about the challenges and the opportunities kind of available. We then moved on to Belfast, and we, we some of the big four in EY, KPMG. Um, got to see some of their fancy offices and meet some of their, their key players. And again, feedback was incredible, both on where we're going with the kind of new technologist role, which we'll come back to, and also um, kind of how uh, accounting technicians and how much demand there is um, for them. And then we ended up in Belfast Met, which for me is where it all started. So it was great to get in, meet the new staff. We actually got to introduce ourselves to some of the students um, and then get a big tour and get a lunch thrown in. So it was a really good, positive. Personally, I found it really, really enjoyable and engaging. Professionally, I learned a lot about the Institute and how it's regarded and you know where we're currently at and where we're going and kind of hearing all of that positive feedback and constructive kind of information and leads and all was, it was a real insight into how mm -hmm. uh, much the Institute has going on and how much it has to offer. So um, yeah, roadshow um, through October. And then we culminated that with a Build Your Brand event. So that was the, yeah. the kind of cherry on the top, really. Um, it was in partnership with Higher IQ, who we've just signed a, a new two-year uh, partnership agreement. So it was the first time they were there. Uh, to be honest, I was a bit apprehensive, Evelyn, about what numbers would be, just yeah. you know, in terms of COVID and the fact that we hadn't had an in-person event. And I was just overwhelmed by the response. Mm -hmm. We had students, we had members, we had... Uh, Lecturers, we had all the UDS, uh, Ulster District Society committee members turn out. Um, we had people travel, so fellow board members and committee members from I think Munster and uh, Western traveled up all the way. Um, and yeah, it, it was really good in terms of uh, getting people back in a room and networking, but also having higher IQ there to kind of bring a more formal aspect. And, you know, building your brand is really important, personal branding and what the market looks like and what opportunities there are for kind technicians. So it was a perfect blend. I felt of networking and socializing and, and, and good constructive um, feedback. And there was also a cocktail named after the president, which is a first for me. So I think it went down well. And What's it called? I, I had it along. It was just called the president's cocktail. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I have no idea what was in it, um, but I think it went down well. It doesn't well. really matter. <laughs> It sounds eclectic anyway, if it's going by, um, you can build its brand as you're going along. Yeah, that's fascinating. I, I, I love to hear all the soft skills that are being introduced. So you've touched on a few of them already. And actually building your brand, what people do forget is we're not, when we think of brands, we think of something that's outside of us, but actually we all have our own personal brand and how you, you show up and how you represent yourself um, is really, really important particularly um, when you've got the likes of the membership that you have. So it's um, that's, that sounds like a, it sounds like a pretty busy few months that you've had uh, me all, but no, no chance to put your feet up yet because there's lots ahead. Um, you've got a lot of planning ahead about mem member engagement and future events and, and that. So there was a, a survey and it would be interesting to hear some of the results of the survey and see what came out of that. Yeah, so as I said, a member survey, and we had really good response to that. And um, it was trying to see what's the future for the Institute in terms of how we engage members, taking some of the learnings from COVID, so things that worked really well. And as I mentioned earlier, the CPD programme worked extremely well online. We're, you know, we're reaching hundreds of people, you know, in the high hundreds um, as part of these. And we wouldn't have got that on the face-to-face. -face. So members seemed to enjoy it. Feedback was really good. I think 90% of members said they were uh, like a high satisfaction level with the CPD program so certainly moving that online and continuing that online has been a huge success and um, it's also helped with CPD compliance rates so you know obviously we've launched the CPD program in the last few years and it's about encouraging and helping members get across the line and that's really connected so those compliance rates have, have gone up significantly which is really good just means it takes the pressure off um, members to be able to kind of get that CPD and get it across the line and that we offer these um, online webinars. And as I say, they're right across the year. The variety of topics is, is, is expansive, um, soft skills, technical skills. It, it's, it's, I think it's, it's one of the best CPD programs available and, and currently it's all free of charge. So you know, that's a huge member benefit um, and certainly something we need to continue um, through COVID or through 
ongoing, you know. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, I think um, how member engagement was was formatted, there was definitely a lean towards hybrid. You know, I yes. think people do see the benefits of virtual, but also miss the in-person and what, what that can bring. So uh, certainly, the I think half of members said they would like to see a hybrid engagement plan. So it's trying to understand what that looks like going forward. Yeah, it's interesting be because it's regional as well. It's it's very interesting to see how that can be kept on the whole hybrid side of things. Because, yeah, we, we've missed the connection. And I, I have really found more recently I've been going to events where I'm connecting in the real world, as we call it. And uh, it, it is amazing how different it is. It, it, it really is amazing. I'm running a workshop um, tomorrow which is virtual. And I ran the same workshop um, in a physical format yesterday uh, on site. And it'll be very interesting, the difference. It'll just be different uh, just to, to reflect on it. Um, I, I find, because you talked about time and having the time for things, I think everybody will know that they've become much more um, efficient productivity wise, um, being able to switch on virtually constantly. So it's... Uh, it sounds invaluable, though, the CPD. It really does sound invaluable. And I love the broad spectrum of it. Um, so we're, we're, the, the plan, I think, is from what you're saying is we understand that there's a bit of hybrid, but you'll also do a lot of online engagement. And, and what, is there any plan? Because there's there's a lot um, that you've been working with the Member Experience Committee. So it'd be very interesting to see what the re-engagement plan then for 2023 is? Yeah, so over the last few weeks, maybe even months, we've been beavering away on that kind of engagement plan. So working with the um, member service experience in ATI themselves, and also we invited all um, district society committee members to input on it as well. And what mm -hmm. kind of emerged was that, you know, hybrid is potentially the best way forward. It's what people want, but finding the right mediums, whether that's online or in person to match the activity and what the objectives are. So as I mentioned, stuff like the CPD program works well online. So there doesn't seem any need to change that or, or to, to, you know, the benefit seems to be there and proven that would remain online. We're also looking at other initiatives like a member refresh program, which is kind of a subsidized, technically focused upselling course. And it's still um, in the kind of development phase so what yeah. that looks like but certainly that seems to be a support of the CPD and also in line with what members want which is to refresh their skills regardless of when they've done their exams so it brings everybody up kind of um regardless of where you when you graduate it brings everybody up to the same and a consistent skills base we also have our annual tech day which has been running I think over the last three years and again that's worked extremely well online the format of that seems to be really connecting it suits the event and again members seem to enjoy that format um, but we are coming into our 40th, as you say, we turn 40 next year. So there'll be a number of events that we look at, both virtual and in-person. And one of those is getting back to an in-person conferring ceremony, potentially oh, early next year. Like I remember my conferring ceremony like it was yesterday and yeah. on the stairs and being around by people you went to class with yeah. and meeting their family. Like there was no substitute for that. Obviously, we all had to adapt to moving it online and being able to continue the conferring process. But certainly, it seems like a good opportunity to trial this back in person. Um, and I'm glad that the Institute have kind of decided to trial it and see what that looks like. And um, so more information will be, be coming out on that. Um, the big thing is the in-person um, district society events. So again, we've had great input from the district societies themselves. Some really constructive feedback in terms of you know, what worked for them historically what they think their members taking into consideration their geographical you know spacing you know the western and and, and you know you've got quite a diverse land so it's trying to offer an, an opportunity what's the carrot to get people to come along or what can we offer to entice people so there's been some really good events um planned even in the short term and um, i think the munster and um western are turned mm -hmm. 10 this year so they've organized a a rugby event at the um, at the end of the month so I'm lucky enough to be invited and we'll be traveling down so really looking forward to that but that's something that's been turned around kind of linked to what um, has gone been successful before and what members want and so we've tried to, tried to tailor the program for that I even think the western are putting on a Christmas event which they turned down really quickly turned around really quickly I think the invites went out this week so again awesome. that'll be an offering for for the western um, district society membership and um, the rest of the industries are working through what works best for them. And we hope to be in touch with a full, I think we're calling it a re-engagement and a mm. reconnect plan for 2023. And we would hope to roll that out kind of early, early next year. And it'll be a full 12 months of events based around charities, networking, linked to um, 
the new relationship at higher IQ, certainly trying to, 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 to deal with that and, and give members an opportunity to meet with them and see what opportunities are available. So I think we're going in very much basing this on feedback directly from those in the membership or those involved in the events in the past. We have a really good um, team at ATI who are, you know, we're beaving away and see the importance of this. And certainly one of my priorities this year is trying to find that balance and what reconnect actually looks, re-engagement and reconnect actually looks like for a membership. Um, so it's a really exciting time, I think. And um, I think when the survey went out recently, 85 of the membership said they felt supported by the Institute institute through COVID so certainly we were able to react and adapt really quickly and we want to do is take that you know that positive feedback and that positive support and continue that as we emerge from the pandemic and what this new normal looks like over the next 12 18 months so mm -hmm. it's a really exciting time I feel quite lucky and um, that it's happened during my tenure and, and hopefully my experience on the district society committee organizing the events being on the member services will all help help with that mm -hmm. and the fact there's a willingness from the institute and and everybody involved to make it work is, is fantastic. So I'm really excited for that to be rolled out early next year. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I'm, I'm pretty impressed um, by the amount of activity that's happening in the Institute. And if, if I'm sitting here on the call or I'm listening to the recording, how, how, how do I hear about all of these things? Just in case I'm not aware of that. Well, um, we do have a website, so all of the events will be going up and be available to book through the website. We do have an easing that goes out, I think, once a month and tends yeah. to highlight any upcoming events. And um, certainly if you're unsure of what events are oncoming and um, get in touch with the Institute with the member experience team, it's kind of Perfect. been restructured recently and, you know, it's very much at the forefront of what members are offered. So if you're in any doubt, if you want to join the committees, then you have an opportunity to just email the member experience and we get we get people on and yeah. um, that way. Um, I just want to give a shout out to all the district societies, you know, it's been a tough few years and we're trying to find the feed as to what that looks like going forward, but the turnout at the last meeting and the input and the participation and the ideas you know it's been huge so we're mm -hmm. really reliant on the experience and the skills and the commitment of all those committee members so we've had some on the committees for years you know 10 11 12 years i believe maybe 10 years um, and it's important you know that that they're recognized and certainly getting them back and getting their input and their feedback has been pivotal it's really it really has kind mm -hmm. of refocused and kind of help us prioritize what members maybe want and need yeah, I, I agree. And actually, I've been um, on a committee for years myself. And what I think is really important is fresh blood as well is really, really important to bring onto the, the committees. We have a question here that's just come in, Michal. It's how will the new accounting technologists, so we were going to touch on that, actually, so we might as well touch on it now, is how will the new accounting technologist degree complement the accountant um, technician? Okay, well, the accounting technologist is a, is a new um, it's a new pathway for accounting technicians. So it's still in development and consultation stage, but essentially it's going to break new new territory by being the first All Ireland degree level apprenticeship in the sector. So over the last number of years, there's been a consistent call from members for a clear progression pathway separate from the traditional and um, professional accounting route. So this is where the idea of the technologist came in. It kind of would sit at the intersection of modern finance, IT, information systems, and organisational government. So um, we would anticipate that the technologist would take responsibility for like financial and non-financial reporting, kind of an insight, um, developing insights into corporate governance and supporting corporate governance within organizations. So as I said, there's a lot of research go ongoing. Um, I think we've engaged all stakeholders and, and actually we really would like input from members and I'll, I'll touch on that again towards the end, Evelyn. Um, mm -hmm. But significant research and consultation from employers, different scales, size, various sectors, you know, shows that there is a, a requirement for this um, role. And actually um, what we're offering, you know, is what the business needs and it offers an opportunity for members to progress. Um, so it builds on the experience and knowledge that they would have kind of as their accountant technician and positioning them and, and, and members in a way to um, be better placed to avail of new opportunities both within organizations and kind of in the wider recruitment market so there is very much a demand for the role it's from the feedback that we're getting very positive so it's just coming down to the nitty-gritty now of, of, mm -hmm. of how that would be ruled out what that looks like and, and a key part will be input from our members yeah. so um, it'll be similar to the apprenticeship model i think er earn and learn which means that you'll be able to work and, and learn at the same time so there's huge benefits for there rather than having to take a time out to go back to education it's very much that and earn and learn model which has worked really well for the apprenticeships 
Yeah, and actually you mentioned that earlier as well, it's the whole idea of learning something and then being back in an organisation where you can te test it out. I, I, I just think it's such an incredible way of learning. We call it in our in our area as uh, coaches and trainers, we call it experiential learning is what we call it. But actually, it's the same idea that you learn as you're doing. So it sounds like a progression pathway, really, is what it sounds like. For yeah, and potentially a new profession as well. So there's, yeah. there's great potential for it. And as I say, the feedback yeah. to the roadshow employers colleges has been overwhelmingly positive um, and yeah. but it's you know it's still at that consultation phase although we would hope to to roll it out early next year for the first cohort in september 2023 so september 2023 and again if people want to get involved um michal i know you said you mentioned pleasure but just in case we we, we get distracted um how would people get involved or give feedback? Is there, that could be in whatever communication goes out to the membership, is it? Yeah, so I think it'll be in the form of a survey and you're probably thinking, oh no, not another survey. <laughs> but as I say, it's really important that for members yeah. to have their say shaping the technologies and the curriculum and what that looks like. So, you know, we are a professional membership body and we want to hear from our members. So yeah, I would encourage, similar to what we spoke about earlier, to people to get involved, to complete the survey you know, and feedback, because it's, it's really important. You know, member feedback is, 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 is pivotal. I think it's really important. And yeah, you said, no, no, not another survey. But actually, what you, you do is you listen to the surveys responses. I mean, it's really obvious that you're responding um, to surveys and, and what's happening, because one of the things that came up and it was is something that was uh, reviewed at one stage was the values the values of ATI and I think we have a little bit of a poll as well but maybe you want to give a bit of background as to uh, the review that was taken on the values of ATI because it's it's fascinating what you were saying before. Well, no, we've all come through the last few years and it's, it's required businesses to kind of evaluate and review strategic plans, business plans, operational plans in light of the last few years and, and kind of what the strategic priorities are going forward. So and um, what I might ask to do is for is for Karen to just put up the first slide. So really there's a couple of things I want to highlight about kind of values and where they sit within an organization. So um yes yeah, so there's a couple of things that jump out at me here. So obviously they're important because they underpin strategy and, and a key point of reference as an organization members work towards their goals. And also it, it helps achieve the mission. So the mission of, of ATI and the uh, values support that and also determine kind of behaviors on the culture. So they're, they're really important. I feel values underpin kind of how an organization, what they are and how they, how they conduct themselves and, and how they work forward in the future. You know, all aligned to their values. So the executive and the board were all in agreement that it was an opportunity to review these. Um, so if we maybe have a look, Karen, at the older or the previous um, um, values. So there was a seven original values that members would have been familiar with um, as per a strategic plan. So um, after much deliberation, um, professionalism, excellence and innovation were removed as core values as they were deemed to be either less specific to our mission here at ATI or kind of linked to behaviours. Um, so uh, they were kind of removed in the first shift. And then we looked at accessibility, reverent, re relevance and collaboration, which we felt were still were still important core values and um, which behaviours and actions would stem from. So um, there was a complete exercise done with consultation of staff and key stakeholders. And we've moved towards kind of five, five core areas, the three I mentioned there, but also two new ones. Um, which have emerged through COVID of agility, agility and courage. So these were seen as vital um, to growth and the development of ATI in this new normal, particularly when the accounting and finance sector was shifting quite substantially um, over the last 12 to 18 months. So we'd be really interested to get some feedback from, from those here today. Um, so is there any uh, particular values that stand out as most integral to the work at ATI? So the new five being accessibility, or sorry, Yes, accessibility, relevance, collaboration, agility, and courage. So we'll be really keen to get, get your feedback on those. So you'll just see a poll on your screen, actually, Miho. Thanks for that. There's a poll on the screen there. So what value stands out to you um, the most important as integral to the work at ATI? And it's a single choice. So just maybe uh, put in your vote there, and then we'll share the results. Unfortunately, we can't vote, Evelyn, so uh, no way I'm yeah, no, I, know, I know which one I'm picking anyway. <laughs> you can let us know when we can share the screen. Just while people are voting there, agility is something that just is coming up nearly with every client that I work with. Um, the need to be agile 
even in the whole return to work, in the approach to work, in the hybrid working way, in the speed we react. Um, agility is, is something that keeps coming up for, for people. It's huge. I don't think it's one that would have been at the forefront pre-COVID. You know, we've certainly, it definitely seems a result of, of recent developments. Um, per personal agil agility, professional agility, organizational agility. You know, it's yeah. really at the fore now and having that flexibility to adapt as well. Yeah, it's 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 really it's it's fascinating because we would have talked about agile workplaces in the past, and it is fascinating to see how often it's coming up. So there's your results actually. Thank you for sharing them. So accessibility is 37%, agility is 30%, collaboration at 11 percent courage four percent and relevance nineteen percent. Uh, so they're very interesting. Uh, accessibility and agility. So the new one is popular already. Um, yeah. Courage, I think, is something that as you probably develop with the, the new values that it probably come into play more and more at events, exactly what's explicit with courage. Yeah, I, I would have chosen accessibility. Um, I do yeah. feel that's a core of what businesses are doing now and, and everything kind of stems from that, you know, having yeah. a diverse offering, a dessert, diverse membership and engaging with stakeholders. I think that's really important. Um, and it's one that I mentioned at the outset actually as my presidency as a focus is, is about accessibility and, and making um, the account technician qualification and what we offer to members accessible to all. Yeah. So I'm delighted to see that one top of the list, but followed closely by agility, you know, as we discussed. Yeah. I think yeah. courage is probably slight, maybe understanding, you know, what courage courage means. So, you know, more detail will go out on these values and um, so the members can really understand kind of the thought process behind them. But it's great to see the, the yeah. institute acknowledge that and, and, and the board and executive led and the fact that we've engaged and, and are able to go out mm. to members this afternoon is, is, is really good. I'm really pleased. To see yeah. That. Yeah, and, and one of the um, events that I um, hosted more recently, it, it was the courage to lead. And, you know, often then when we hear about leaders, we think of outside of ourselves, but everybody is a leader. So it's the courage actually to take the steps forward for yourself. And if that's attending events and if that's just recognizing work life balance or if, if that's deciding to go on and do further education, all of those things are courage. So I think it ties really nicely into ATI's um, ethos and the values. So we have another poll, do we? We have another I think we do. Oh, sorry. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. So the second yeah. poll is, do these values align with your views of the Institute? So yeah. it's kind of a follow on. Do they feel a representative um, and align with, with ATI and the Institute? So that'll be an interesting one. That'll be, yeah. Thank you for it is there for me telling you all about the courage, but actually <laughs> it does in my head. Um, Just to notice, Moose um, Evelyn, um, no, a follow on from this is now establishing a framework. You know, so yes. that we can ensure these values are being adhered to at a strategic and operational level. So um, there's perfect examples of, you know, we're living what we're saying we're going to do through the, the technologist, you know, yeah. which is, is due to launch next year. So I think we're, we're definitely living our values. it will be interesting to see what, what the thoughts are, but whether these align with, with their yeah. The other thing I've just noticed, Michal, is the time. Can you believe it? That the two of us have been talking for uh, <laughs> so we, we should give time for more questions as well if there are any questions so was, yes well that's what you want to hear me all in your presidency they do a lot that's excellent um and if anybody feels courage courageous enough even to to put it in the chat and not to say the name as to why but Anybody who thinks that they're not aligned, it'd be very useful just to let the membership engagement team know, because quite often there's just something small that's missed. And yeah. uh, that's why there is a membership engagement team. Um, so I, I was just thinking there as we were waiting for the poll results to come up. Um, my mother's 91 and when she sees me, she she chats away and chats away and chats away. And then at the end, she says, now, as soon as you're gone, I'll remember something to ask you. So I'm just going to ask you, is there anything else that you'd like to actually mention before we just ask for more questions and, and formally close? No, we, we've, we've covered a lot there. <laughs> you know, yeah, we, have really? this wrap, we have this wrapped up in 30, 40 minutes, but it felt, it felt great. It's really good to have an opportunity to kind of give a wee bit about my story, but also talk about the exciting things that's happening in the Institute. So as I say, you know, if anybody has any feedbacks, perfect example is, is those who don't quite agree that the current values align, you know, do feedback, you know, all feedback is welcome. Um, and certainly they'll be taken into consideration. Um, the kind of technologist is the big development, you know, and it is a work in progress. 
still consultation and for, for members to feedback is really important. So we hope to get that out to them in the next week or so, I, I assume. So that, that'll that'll kind of inform where we go next year. I'm excited, delighted that it's a 40th uh, birthday yeah. next year. I think I really lucked out on that. Yeah. Again, uh, you get to party the whole myself, time. Haven't turned 40 yeah. myself last year. A bit. You, can, uh, you can celebrate. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's very good. And Gillian, actually, thank you, Gillian. Gillian has put in all feedback, very welcome on all the topics mentioned today. And of course, uh, my one of my very good friends of mine, she, she also says feedback is the breakfast of champions. And um, we should all be open to feedback. There's a question here, uh, Michal, and I think we have enough time. So please post post any questions. Um, will there be any help in getting skills up to date for the technologist? Um, I, I don't want to go into too much detail on that, because as I say, it's still under consultation and there's a, there's a lot of development still to be done. Um, but certainly support to be provided. You know, it is about a pathway, a new, a new opportunity for members to progress. You know, we would support members. I think one of the things I mentioned there was just a new um, kind of refresh program. So regardless of when you've done your qualification, you know, the refresh program would big all people up to the same level or the same um, kind of uh, position. So nobody would be disadvantaged and um, would be adversely affected by that. So I think there would be support. I just, I don't want to go into the full detail, Evelyn, because, you know, it's mm. still, as I said, a work in progress, but all communications about it and what it looks like and the rollout, you know, we'll all go to members in due course. I'll say that the, the yeah. development is, is nearing the end and all of the, the feedback and the consultation. So we are in the home stretch, uh, but just not quite in a position to give any further detail, if that's, if that's okay. As I say, I don't want to promise more than I can offer, but certainly the intention would be there to, to encourage and support members um, to, to, yeah. to, to achieve this qualification. And, and it sounds like that. And it, it, it definitely you've demonstrated that as well uh, in this talk today, but also in in the feedback and the support to the members up until now. Um, I think if the, the most important thing is if you didn't get um, a response that, that you actually wanted to hear there, reach out to the membership engagement team. Um, Gillian, we're developing a refresher program which will launch next year to close the gap between the current syllabus and earlier versions. More info coming soon. That's exactly what we want to hear Gillian that echoes what Michal was saying as well so thanks a million Gillian <laughs> yeah exactly keep an eye on your emails keep an eye on the website keep an eye on uh, communications and make sure that you respond to the survey that's going out because they, they're, they're definitely worthwhile um, Michal I'd really like to thank you um, I just want to make sure that there are no further closing questions or any final parting presidential thoughts that you want to share, Michal? Before uh, we no, I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm all thought out. Uh, <laughs> I think I was just I was just like a, a huge you know heartfelt thank you to everybody who's who's been in touch about the presidency, who've supported, who's been involved. You know the roadshow, the businesses going back to Belfast Met, we were treated like we're royalty. The team at ATI have been fantastic. Philip and NI, you know, um, Alexandra in marketing, and the whole team have been great. You know, they've been really supportive and I've been able to do what I've done because of them. So really looking forward to the next few months. I'm looking forward to rugby at the end of the month. Um, I've only been to one rugby game in my life, but I'm promised that this will be another level. I mean, I think we have a corporate box and it, the event sold out. So I think I'm lucky enough to have my ticket. Um, right. So we're lucky to head and down. And then, as I say, lots of exciting stuff coming in next year. You know, the 40th celebrations, the member re-engagement all plans. So it's, it's all really positive, you know, and. And I'll just reiterate one more time, please feedback, please, you know, please get involved because it is a member led institution and we do value and, and rely on, on member support and feedback. So um, if yeah. there's one takeaway from that, it would be you know, try and get involved. Well, the next president might be might be listening in today as well. Not the next, but future president may be listening. Exactly, in. exactly. Because yeah. it can happen quite quickly. I didn't expect to be in this no. position. <laughs> um, and as I say, it's a good opportunity to be an NI and, 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 and I'm really, really um, privileged and I'm excited yeah. and I, I look forward to the next few months ahead. And the passing on to Dargan, who'll be taking over um, middle of next year. So uh, Excellent. hopefully Excellent. leave it good enough uh, to think in good stead for him. There you go. We've got our final little up monster. Looking forward to seeing you at the rugby. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so listen, thank you very much. Um, any final thoughts and questions? Uh, we'll stay here for a minute. Otherwise, we will. Uh, the recording will be available as well. And um, best of luck with the remaining part of your presidency, Michal. And thank you for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Evelyn. It's been a pleasure. So I really appreciate you leading me through this. Yeah, very good. Thank you. And best of luck.